Yeah, I take a sealman. Love in Venice. That big is the worst art literally in the world. Half man, half animal, all pussy. Stripping time. Start recording. Right. Say something, Daniel. Howdy. Good. I want to wait a few seconds for you to settle down. No, I'm going to do some more. I'm a restless spirit. Yeah, but the microphone is going to pick everything up and it's going to be terrible. But isn't that to create ASMR for your, like, degenerate audience? Fuck you. Don't insult my audience. I'll, I'll insult them all day. I got nothing to lose. Daniel has officially become the villain, everybody. <laughs> he has officially become the villain. Have we always been the villain? Inside of us, there's always there's always a villain, and there's always a, a good soul. They're always fighting each other, and when you give in to one of the desires, they take over, and that's how you become evil. Inside us, there's always a villain, and always a man, and always a lighthouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you might get something good, or you might get a pretentious train wreck. You never know. You never know. Knowing you, are you going to leave this in the podcast? So, Daniel, what is your experience with Sonic the Hedgehog? Mm, Sonic the Hedgehog was like the 90s in a nutshell. Because it's like, yo, man, we got Sega does, but it tend don't with your head, with your hat turned backwards and your skateboard in your hand and like a fucking bottle of Surge. You guzzle that shit down and you have like a fucking heart attack because 90s junk food was no joke. And... Sonic was like, yo, man, do this if you want to be cool like me. But uh, to answer your question directly, um, I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I know my sisters liked Sonic because they were like the right age for that because they were like there when he came out at the time. And th my first experience with Sonic was Sega Game Gear in the first game. And my dad found it in a mm. truck back when he used to work for uh, like a manager at one of these things. And was like, fuck it, I'll take it home. And that's how we had Sonic. We had it on a Sega Game Gear. <laughs> Mm. And I didn't know how to play this shit, so it's like I'll play the level until the batteries die, or the, or I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Oh well, that's gonna be easy with the Game Gear. Mm -hmm. But I want to <laughs> say my true experience, as 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 one were to say, open your heart, will be in the vein of the Sega Dreamcast. Which I got in 2003 for Christmas. Which at the time, I didn't know that thing was like dead already. But I'm like, yo, this is the rad thing. Because up until that point, all I had was a PS1 still. And for Christmas, I think mm -hmm. I got like a couple of games that nobody cares about. And then it came with a demo disc. And on it was like Sonic. And I'm like, yo, man, this thing's rad. It's Because it's got the first level of like the beach or whatever. So it's like, yo, man, it's got sand. It's got crabs. It's got lens flares. And it's got Sonic with his weird 3D fucking Rule 34 model and stuff like that say, oh i really want to pick up this game and because i didn't know much about how sega the fucking dreamcast was dead so i went down to my local thing and they had like a couple of dreamcast games but they kind of kept it away like it was like a bastard child <laughs> in the game store <laughs> it's like we got it here in the corner of this thing you know we, you know no like, daniel we're not gonna no daniel no now. daniel it wasn't there because it was the bastard child it's because they knew nobody yeah. could handle the dreamcast nobody could handle the true genius, the true power that was the Dreamcast. The, the Dreamcast. So then I got that game and I'm like, yo, this is kind of rad, but because maybe I just wasn't good at it. And maybe because I didn't realize controls back then, nobody didn't know how to make a game with good controls back then. So I played the Sonic game and I want to say it's like, yo, this is rad, but I got stuck on the fucking ice level, which is like the third or fourth level. And it's like, I don't know how to fucking beat this game. And then I think I put it down and picked it up like a month later. And I was like, oh, I guess I can do it. And then the rest is history. I opened my heart and I saved the day and a million people died during that station square when chaos attacked and, and then tells like an asshole sits on top of the wreckage with a big smile on his face and he's like, whoop, all's well that ends well. The fighting's over, harmony's restored, and... <laughs> harmony is restored as the water rushes in the background and, and buildings are still practically waterfalls for some reason. <laughs> We can insert DuckTales here. All's well that ends well, right?
God, you are an asshole. <laughs> and it just goes away. It just goes away into the fucking endless abyss beyond those little clutters of like four oh, three ass buildings. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck is this game? Fuck me. Mm. You know, I wholeheartedly respect any nostalgia you have, but Sonic Adventure is kind of retarded. Is but is is it the best kind now? No, it's retarded like fucking like fucking Sonic 06. Retarded like for Sonic Forces. Retarded it's like Sonic Lost World. Retarded like Sonic fucking 4. Ugh. So are those your first Sonic games then? Is that your introduction to this mad magical series? Sonic no, 06. No, I actually played I actually no. I never played Sonic 06. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that fucking dumb. So basically I got introduced uh, through to Sonic with the fucking mobile versions of Sonic 1, 2 and CD. And I thought the intro to Sonic CD was like the most raddest shit fucking ever. Mm. So are you saying you in that in that moment of wow you suddenly became a, a 90s child in the embodiment in a zoomer body yes daniel i became the ultimate life form yeah that's what that's what that's what all warriors strive for so i gotta ask you this because i feel like i only play like a couple of sonic games because it's like yeah well, this is rad but i'd rather go play the game where you shoot the guns mm -hmm. and so technically i only played like two sonic games and you have way more experience with sonic games how many of you said would you have played like which games have you played i played one two and cd both on the genesis emulator on steam by uh, xbox one controller which was honestly the best experience with these things i did play Sonic Adventure 2, which I thought was fucking stupid. Yeah, but it's got that gun truck. But it's got that gun truck. Shadow the Hedgehog, which I thought, yeah, it's the game where you shoot the gun, and it's and you have the edgy 2000s music, and it's gonna be like, yeah, that's my jam because I like that butt rock. But then, mm -hmm. and then it just turns out it's like, what the fuck is this shit? This is stupid and boring. And like, and like, what the fuck? You gotta do 3D platform? This is a Sonic 3D platformer. What the fuck is this shit? I just wanted to play fucking shitty first person shooter. I mean, to be fair, the marketing is kind of misleading. I mean, there's a motorcycle and a fucking Ford M1911, so I'd assume there'd be at least one drive-by. So are you telling me that it's like, I want to play the Sonic games and I want to have my gun, so I play Shadow of the Hedgehog, which in reality you should just play Black. Because that game is literally just a racing game with guns, which was also made by the Burnout developers. I have never heard of that, and it sounds cool. The idea I shouldn't have played fucking Shadow the Hedgehog. I think that's your first mistake right there. I think it was Sega's mistake, fucking releasing that game. <laughs> yeah, but Sega is like, we do what the tent don't, which means we put out shit and these, these, these children will buy it because we're rad. It's like that uncle that sells you probably like Drano, and he's like, yo, this is too late, did you drink it? And you'd be like, yeah, it's got the blue, so I'll drink it anyway, rather than ask a question. <laughs> I played some stupid Sonic racing game. Once again, I want to stress this. I didn't play these in, like, this order. I played Sonic Generations. I played Sonic Lost World for a bit. Then a bit of Sonic Mania. Bit of Sonic 4. And Sonic Forces. I don't care if you want to say that like, Sonic Adventure 2 was good. Because to me, it was fucking stupid and dated and has a fucking stupid... Goddamn Chow Garden, which is like the dumbest fucking thing to put in like a platformer. Especially someone that tries to be like cool and hip and they just has this cutesy bullshit Tamagotchi Garden thing. And it. it's like, what the well, fuck? Are you high? Why do you force me to go to this thing? Like, I immediately just, just went there, just turned around and just made it immediately back to the campaign. I don't know if that's the right way oh. to play it, but like, fuck you. I think because you didn't play it after optimally because what you're supposed to have done was played it on the dreamcast which had that little save thing which was also a little tamagotchi so you can unplug it and play a little chow garden in your, in your little save drive so technically that was how you were supposed to play it but nobody fucking did yeah because nobody could handle the dreamcast nobody could handle its brilliance nobody could handle it it's got that 
thing you plug in and connect to the internet that's too powerful for 99 children yeah therefore it died you know they had no choice but to destroy it yeah it's like it's like it's like why do you think they put it in the in the in the in the, in the landfill we couldn't handle it like mm -hmm. we can't put it in the same landfill as et but we got to put it in the landfill nobody can handle it yeah it was so powerful that it not that it, that it fucking killed shenmue for like 19 years now that's sega's own doing it that's their fault for spending too much damn money on it but then out of the ashes was born was the yakuza series so technically it all ended well yeah and then Kazuma Kiyu fucking became Sega's true mascot. The mascot he was always intended to be. And I'm still waiting for that fucking crossover Sega. On second thought, I wouldn't want the little blue rat touch Kazuma Kiyu's disco suited brilliance. Mm. Cause aside from the Dreamcast, Kazuma Kiyu and Yakuza is the most <laughs> powerful life form. What is the first? Fortnite? What if what if the what if the brilliance was stolen out of the hard drives from the uh, Sega Dreamcast and they're integrated by into Epic, and therefore it was a long-term plan of like aha with the ashes of this we will create Fortnite. But it's like a bastard stone and eventually it'll collapse in on itself because they didn't they didn't they didn't use purification when they when they transferred this power. It's like a Final Fantasy villain. Makes sense to me. But yeah, my point is I don't think fucking Sonic became worse. I think literally that Sonic was always on such a shaky, stupid ground. Just all this new stupid stuff, like basically rebooting the Sonic entire identity. That's, I think, what's what made it worse. Because, like, I could deal with Sonic where it was just, like, mean bean machine, fucking Sonic ZAM level of shit. Because that's, that's just a cartoon. That's just a game cartoon. That's, like, the only good game cartoon. It's kind of funny that Sonic had, like, the only good video game cartoon of the 90s. And it only it had and it also has like the only good video game movie. Really? Are you saying it was better than the Mario Brothers movies? Mario! Luigi! They're on the trail Luigi! of a kidnapped princess. <laughs> the one with not Donald Trump and the World Trade Center, John Lake Wazamo in not Mad Max universe. I got a feeling we're not in Brooklyn no more. Are you telling me that that was a better movie? No, because it didn't have Jim Carrey as Eggman. Oh. Also, technically, it's also a better movie because it had Kiryu in it, too, so it automatically makes it a better movie. Sega's over ambitious Marvel <laughs> logo, like, we're gonna hit strong first movie out. Wait, wait. Oh, that's so great! The movie's already amazing! I, I wish they had, even though the movie was successful, I would, I want them to be more hubris with their logo. Like with Doug's first new movies, like Sega's first movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, or like Double Down, and they have a logo that says like 10 years in the making of the first annual Sonic, or something. I wanted to double down on their logo. Oh, so you want, you want the Sonic Dark Universe? Yes. I want, I want Shadow the Hedgehog executing somebody, and then he turns to the camera and says, We will rise up, and then Sonic gasps. And therefore, Sonic teams up with like an inter international terrorist organization to stop the other terrorists, and it's just a Tom Clancy game. I support that. <laughs> I just want to put in a clip of this German game review slash sketch show, shuddering at the idea of a Sonic movie back in 2012. Yeah, Pappnasen. I have a Mega Drive. This is kaputt. I will Austausch gerät haben. Ey, Kollege, das Ding ist seit über 15 Jahren an dich verliehen. Denkst du, Sonic und Knuckles spielen sich an einen Abend durch, oder was? Alter, du schuldest uns 3750 Euro. Euro, Schmeuro, ey. Krieg ich jetzt ein Ersatzgerät oder nicht? Übrigens, ihr Experten, habt ihr schon mal was von dem Sonic-Film gehört? Bestimmt nicht, oder? Ich schon. Aber ihr wird bestimmt eh wieder scheiße, ey. Weil der Tails, den machen sie bestimmt aus CGI und mit Big the Cat, den kriegen sie gar nicht auf den Bildschirm drauf, weil er so fett ist. Okay, das kann jetzt etwas dauern, denn wenn Sonic-Nerds in Fahrt kommen, kann sie nicht so schnell aufhalten. Und beim Gedanken an CGI Tales packt uns das kalte Grausen, ehrlich gesagt. God, I miss Game One. Ey, ach, Digga. I think it's funny how with hindsight the Sonic movie turned out to be actually good. For me, that in and of itself was a joke eight years in the making. Would you say Sonic-inspired games are way better than what Sonic should have been? Just Yeah. I would say that Sonic-inspired anything is better than what Sega actually does with the franchise. Chili dogs. But game specifically, yeah. Because I, I genuinely think like the, the when they split it from like the original thing and rebooted it for like the 3D thing with like all this pseudo shonen anime bullshit, 
that's where it really fucking just all fell apart for me because I think it should have been this little this little cutesy series with like the really like bullshit like ha ha like the ha ha wiggle your finger type of thing like I wish that just went on like it did <laughs> it's, it's just literally just the most comprehensible thing for people in the West it's not like Or fucking, or like Daniel said to me once, fucking double down on the Japanese shit and just let the Yakuza team write a Sonic game. Yep. Pick one, because it's always in this weird space of like, what the fuck is this? Like, of all the game series, it's like, you know, you got those game companies, like, here's our template, let's just, like, the fucking shitty uh, Telltale, like, here's our template, give us your property, and nobody wants that. I would, Sega, with the Yakuza template, I would be completely fine if more games did that, because it worked. Yeah. Because it fucking works. It's fun. To me, it's fun to watch because it's weird as shit. And, like, that's what I want Sonic to be. Like, Sonic Forces and Sonic Lost World and Sonic Colors. Like, this stuff is boring to watch. Like, this stuff isn't funny. This stuff it doesn't have, like, the outrageous bullshit of, like, Sonic and the Black Knight of Sonic 06. Like, I don't like those games. But that experimental era with the fucking Sonic Manhog, the fucking Sonic Werewolf thing, this fucking Sonic Yif Werewolf. That's the era I fucking love. It's just... That's the... That's the stupid bullshit that I wish Sonic games did more of instead of just, hey, let's have a game where you play as a Sonic... OC. OC, I guess? And... And like in the early 2000s, it was like, let's make, let's make him a werewolf. Let's give the other character fucking guns. Let's let's do all this outrageous bullshit. But now it's just fucking boring and no, and I don't want to watch it. Let's give him a human girl. Yeah. Then again, that was always in the thing and it was called fucking Madonna. Gonna give you all my love, boy. Yeah, that... I, I want, I'm probably going to say that's just an offshoot from 90s mascot. Mm-hmm. Because 90 mascot, 90s mascots are like, yo, I'm this weird little creature. Probably should be like on a government watch list. But I also got this sexy girlfriend because that's how 90s are. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say though, I gotta say though, I hope, I hope no Sonic fan is gonna write like a weird comment. Actually, no, I, I do hope Sonic fans are gonna write weird comments under this fucking thing. Like, Sonic fans, welcome. Sonic fans, welcome. We on the, the Panthcast, the Sergeant Panther YouTube channel, endorses weird stupid sonic bullshit if you have a sonic fan theory they're both female if you want to make an announcement if you want to piss on the moon if you want to piss on the pathcast do it in the comments i'm gonna enjoy reading them because yep. that means somebody actually left a comment thanks daniel that's what i do i guess if i were to say if you were to choose all this crazy gonzo shit what is your favorite bullshit sonic thing that they try to do Shadow the Hedgehog, without a doubt. I mean, I've used so much footage of that oddity in this episode already, because it's just legitimately hilarious to watch how edgy it presents itself versus what it actually is. I mean, Sonic characters with guns is fucking magical. It's as magical as what's inside the Quiet Kids Love the Trench Coat. Mm. Like, that's my favorite shit. I like seeing Sonic characters with bullshitly realistic weapons. It's magical. It's fucking magical. It's like, like I want, like, with these stupid Sonic proportions, cartoon proportions, with this realistic gun shooting somebody via a Soldier of Fortune gore system. Or a fucking sniper elite. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I almost wanted to bring that up. Like, my favorite memory of the Dreamcast is some of the games I'd had. And, like, one of the first games I ever got for it was Soldier of Fortune, which was basically a shitty port because you walk around the corner and the game has to load the level. So it's like a Half-Life, but that game was so fun because it's like, oh, look at all the bullshit shit you can do. This is like, oh yeah, this is the game that Fox News told you to watch out for your child playing. And then like a year later, I played Sonic Adventure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the funniest thing is? He showed me a picture of him like tracing a bunch of old Sonic Adventure art, like when he was like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was like the last time he did Sonic art. And then when I when I when I joked to him and the Mad Lad actually did it and made the Sonic fan out recently, uh, uh, he was like, "Oh shit, hey Puma man, I think you just started something." Yeah, because drawing it, I'm like, "Oh yeah, these proportions are easy. No wonder why fucking everybody does Sonic fan art." 
Mm -hmm. It's like it's a big circle with noodle arms and big Rayman proportions. Like, yep, this shit is actually easy to draw. I can see why people do it. I don't know, like, I, it's so weird because like, a part of me wants to like make fun of Sonic, but at the same time, I, I can't because I just respect it so much for what it's crazy, stupid shit that it does and the fan base that it has. Like, I respect it because of that. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a fan base that you have every fetish under the sun doing it but it also has all the christians too and also has all the cool radical kids and the zoomers and the 90s kids are like yo i remember sonic it's like a franchise that has mm -hmm. everyone under the sun that could at least like it to some degree yeah yeah because like i don't hate sonic i think sonic is fucking dumb like i'd probably walk over a fucking floor covered with glass shards than buy a sonic game on release but I fucking love Sonic. Fucking, I love the stupid fan bullshit. I, I love the fan art. I love the fucking reanimate fucking Sonic X. Relaxation. I love just all the fan material so much because it's so fucking dumb. It's the it's the greatest. It's it's fucking it's the greatest thing in the world, believe me. You mean the Chaos Emeralds? Ah! One thing about the Sonic games, regardless of its of its like quality in terms of gameplay, but they've traditionally always had really great music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can agree to that. That's I still sometimes just pull up fucking Sonic, Sonic Adventure. The music from those games are like disturbingly fucking good. Like fucking yeah. the the fucking E G G M A N. That fucking song is so awesome. Live and learn. Fucking escape from the city. It's just so fucking good. Mm-hmm. The philosophy of those games that they feel like a video game yeah. music, like yeah, get hype. And that's probably why I, I really attach to like Yakuza because you're like, yeah, this music just blasts when you're like a five second fight, but it's the most hype thing ever. And then I think of Sonic, where those games have the most exciting music for what is essentially a, yeah. two, a like a minute long level. It's like yo, get hype, yeah. and it's like yeah, I want to get hype too. Uh, you you, you want to know how first? Like I I would never have given a shit about Sonic. If I didn't get introduced to it the way I did in the early 2010s, I played I played these games on my iPad, and um, that's not how I got introduced to Sonic. The way I got introduced to Sonic was bullshit, creepy pastas. Und jetzt heult Tails wie eine kleine Bitch. Wenn ich in so einem schlecht programmierten Spiel wäre, würde mich das aber vermutlich auch traurig machen. Creepy passes was the way I got into Sonic. Fucking oh no, there's a cursed Tails doll. Oh no, it's gonna come out of the TV and get you. Like it's fucking Killer Queen or something. And <laughs> then you have fucking oh no, there's a dark Sonic that's inhabiting a video game. Oh, and, and it's fucking Sonic.exe. Oh no. It's gonna show you an evil screenshot of fucking Sonic's friends dismembered. Oh no, it's so scary. <laughs> and then you have another possessed Sonic. That's 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 a different possessed Sonic. Don't you worry. That's inhabiting Sonic colors, and it makes it makes Sonic black. Oh no. Ich sitze nun hier in einer Art. Anstalt für psychisch gestörte Menschen, denn es sind bereits drei qualvolle Jahre vergangen und genau ein Jahr nach dem Tod meiner Freundin. Das einzige, was ich bei ihrer Leiche vorfand, war eine kleine Notiz mit der Inschrift, ich bin immer noch hier. That's how I got introduced to Sonic. And if that isn't the best introduction to this fucking franchise it could have given me, then I don't know what is. Hmm. It's quite a quite a unique introduction. Yeah. Hmm. This so is that why I picked up the game and say, like, hey, I might I might I might get a ghost in my house if I play these Sonic games or Yeah, it, it might fucking it might fucking kill me. That'd be fucking amazing.
get an ancient Chinese ghost in your house, and your mom's like, what'd you do this time? And it's like, I didn't know it would happen. <laughs> oh no, I picked it up from a flea market. I picked up a Sega Game Gear from the back of somebody's truck, and that's when it came out and killed me. Mm -hmm. You didn't pick it up from like, oh, my brother died. He played a Sonic game. He's dead now. Do you want to buy a Sega Game Gear for five euros? <laughs> That's a that's what happened. There's this movie that came out in the early 2000s. I think it's called Left Alive or Alive. It has like I think it's Frankie Muniz is in it, Ooh. and it's like <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we got this mysterious box in the mail that contains a brand new game, and they're like, "Ooh, what's this mysterious video game?" And they play it, and then like a ghost kills them like five days later if they die in the game, they die in real life. Hmm. <laughs> so I just watched this game a movie. He has some choice clips. Girl has got body karate going on. You know, anyone who says size doesn't matter never played a third person shooter. You're a whore. <sighs> Sit back down. Bro. Do it. Dude. Put your hands on it. You're disgusting. Touch it. Would you show us some respect, man? Respect? Yeah. Well, you pay respect to gamers by gaming, so let's boot it up! <laughs> You know, this character is the best and worst part about this movie, because he brings that gamer to retail Mountain Dew energy to it, and it gets really fucking boring really fucking fast once he dies. So yeah, 5 out of 10 is definitely appropriate for this movie. There, a little movie review for you, how'd you like that? Is that how you got Sonic? No, I no, bought it on the fucking app store. <laughs> oh, a cursed app store? <laughs> well, mm, it's the Apple app store, so... Ooh. Take that as you will. With blood eyes. Who is so cursed it didn't even allow Fortnite on it. Ooh, topical. <laughs> now that story is fucking old. It's like a month old by this point. Yeah, but the case is still going on as as we speak. Wow, way to date this podcast then. Yeah, just, just like the elections coming up in America land. Yeah, but then again, you will all laugh when Joe Biden unleashes the Satanist zombies. <sighs> That will show you. Oh, so are you saying we are the Omicron now, Mad Saul? Shush, Daniel, that, that's the topic for another podcast. My David oh. Cage journey will be the subject for another podcast, believe me. Believe me, it's going to be the greatest <laughs> podcast in the world. Believe me. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can get out of here. Get him out of here. Mm -hmm. get, give, don't, don't don't give him back his coat. Don't bring him his jacket. Get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, the Lightbringer. <laughs> for for all those curious, yes, Channel Awesome is also going to be a, a fucking coming soon. From the Panth cast, that's going to be a fucking amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Remembering nostalgia, so you don't have to. Remembering Channel Awesome, so you won't have to. <laughs> Yeah, give give him this this list of stuff we may do in the future. I <laughs> know I'm going I'm not going to make give them a list now. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a shit quality video of me walking into my workplace and just and just fucking ripping off my shirt and then revealing it while playing Queen in the background. <laughs> mm. Well, should we at least hint at the possibility of our baby favorite games of like the last Decade, maybe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is gonna. This got. That's gonna come in December. So back to the Sonic Man town. Oh, do we have to? I don't know. This is a Sonic podcast. <laughs> no, we just pretend it's the Sonic podcast. It's actually just us talking bullshit. Oh, the bullshit. It's the bullshit. So yes, overball. And uh, basically, my message is: fuck yourself. What retarded amateur bullshit dirt uh, so goodbye and goodbye hollywood so if you want to talk about random bullshit should we at least talk about the sonic movie oh right i actually like the sonic movie it was a fine movie jim carrey's performance was good um sonic because sonic wasn't fucking sonic in terms of his character he was actually fucking bearable he can't even say something harmless like, Is your memory card set correctly? Without me wanting to find the voice actor and strangle him with the mangled corpse of a fox, I had understandably mistaken for Tails. Is this pre-design or post-design bearable? I don't fucking care. He wasn't terrible. Like, I, I, don't, th I don't think this movie would have been terrible anyway. Because, like, Daniel and I talked about this. A movie is only going to be terrible to us if it gives us nothing. 
if it, if it doesn't make us smile, if it doesn't give us some bullshit moments that we can at least laugh at and remember and joke to each other about, but that's what's a shit movie. But the Sonic movie is genuinely really, really decent. It's watchable. I like it, I like it, I sometimes go back to it and say like, yeah, that's cute. It's certainly better than the fucking Yogi Bear movie or whatever. Welcome to Jellystone Park, famous for its peace and quiet. What the heck was that? Oh, I have problems with potato salad. Lame. And Boo Boo's got the moves. Kicking it. <laughs> Lame. This is the most advanced picnic basket stealing technology ever invented. We're gonna break the picnic barrier. Yogi Bear. Yeah! Behold, the ultimate pug! Would you say this is the best version of live action character interact with 3D character? Yes. That's that's my covert way of saying that. It only took us like 7 to 10 years after the trend fucking died for us to get a good one of those. I think I might have just pulled this off. Really? So I guess we're in for the second wave of that. Life's just not fucking fair, kids. Live with it. I think my favorite part about the movie was, I think you said it, was just seeing Jim Carrey because he's kind of in like pseudo retirement slash doing paintings of Trump right now. And to see him back on the screen, it's like, yeah, this is mm -hmm. why I like Jim Carrey. I love the part at the end where he's like, I'm in not, I'm in not Mario's universe. I'm going to shave my head, become like this ultimate fucking Marlon Brando from Apocalypse Now saying I'll make it home before Christmas. Isn't that right, Agent Stone? <laughs> Why don't you get a head start? Do some rock connaissance! <laughs> Here's the stitch. Uninhabited planet. No resources, no supplies. No apparent way home. <laughs> a lesser man would die here. I'll be home by Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah, he's awesome. I can't wait for the fucking Sonic movie too. Yeah, I can't wait for the Sonic movie to be directed by Spike Lee. Spike Lee joint movie. Mm -hmm. Well, it works. Sonic Spikey. <laughs> I'm just hoping that they don't fuck it up. But then again, it is Sonic, so mm -hmm. it will still be entertaining regardless, but... Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, it would've been entertaining even if this movie fucking sucked. If it had had the original design that it was first teased, then we would've still watched it. Yeah, because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you watch it with that fucking ho horrible manlet? Yeah. Those horrible fucking thighs. Mm hmm. I hope when they bring back that, they introduce his friends. I want Knuckles to have a stupid cowboy hat like he did back in the old thing. And then fucking Big the Cat is there and he's the villain, just like Scrappy Doo from the Scooby Doo movie. <laughs> mm, I totally forgot about that one. It's a good movie. I might as well put it on the list. I hope we don't get that train of playing it safe type movies, like fucking Jurassic World type movie where it's like this movie just plays it so damn safe where it's like it just ends up being nothing. So I hope they at least mm. do some more with the second movie. Yeah, because right now they're projecting it to be released on April 8th, 2022. So that's if the averages of crash and burn as the gun people will tell you. So <laughs> we gotta escape the city with our Sonic merch. Anyways, from politics to more politics. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think the next Sonic games will be? It will be stupid. So you're saying you're looking forward to Sonic Forces 2? I... Here's the thing I want to propose to you. Would you think Sonic Forces would have been better if it was produced by Ubisoft? <laughs> and it's just fucking uh, Watchdog Legions but yeah. with the Sonic character? Dude, yeah, and if they made it like that, that's kind of like the original plot of Sonic Sad AM. And that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, where they're like an eco-terrorist. Yeah. I want them to double down on them being like like red faction with like watchdogs and like eco terrorism. Like I want them to make that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so then Jim Carrey plays the villain. I, I want them to make that because it might be a fun game, but I'm also I want that to exist so you can hear all the news articles saying this game is a radical leftist game or it, it encourages a terrorist activity. Like I just I just want the slew of articles that you can bathe in.
It's like, yeah. But don't, but don't forget, Sonic Team is a bunch of retards. Oh, I feel like there was a joke going around for the longest time that Sega was just the front for the Yakuza, <laughs> like actual <after> legit <laughs> Yakuza to, to launder money. <laughs> That's why they made shit games, but it's just to launder money through development. <laughs> Honestly, like maybe, maybe it's just the Sonic team. Maybe it's just Sonic team because like there's nothing inherently sacred about Sonic. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you keep it with this pseudo Sonic team bullshit? Because like we've been complaining about fucking Sonic team is garbage. For like the better part of like two decades and like if you're not gonna be outrageously fucking stupid like in the early 2000s just give it over to the people who actually like this fucking shit and like to make it no you can't have that you can't have good sonic games what's wrong with you this, that's not how video game industries work you can't have more than one good sonic thing per decade <laughs> how dare you have people who love video games work on games that's, that's, that's just not how you do well, I just kind of want games that don't have fucking chows and charmy the bee and fucking Fucking jizz the bunny, sorry, cream the rabbit in them. Oh yeah. It's like all this random garbage that like Sonic accumulated that nobody fucking likes, but it's still there. It's like why? <laughs> Are you saying you don't want Rouge the Bat with her chest beefers appearing in Mortal Kombat? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Es fing damals mit Sonic Adventure schon an mit diesem 3D-Kram. Und außerdem waren da auch Sonics komische Freunde drin. Und was auch schlimm war, grüne Augen geht's noch. Und dann kam Sonic Heroes. Das fanden ja anscheinend auch ein paar Leute gut, aber meiner Meinung nach haben sie keine Ahnung. Weil da, wenn du mich fragst, ging's los richtig mit Sonic and the Shitty Friends. Aber der allerkrasseste Tiefpunkt, da habe ich auch überhaupt kein Verständnis für Sega, aber Shadow of the Hedgehog. Ohne Scheiß, sag doch mal. Ich sag dir eins, die haben über die ganzen Jahre vergessen, was Sonic eigentlich ausmacht, nämlich schnelles 2D-Gameplay. Und dann kommen sie immer mit diesem 3 d wix um die Ecke, das kein Schwein haben will. Orte und Feinde aus unserer Vergangenheit? Wir, Wir reisen durch Raum und Zeit! I still just want fucking Shadow the Hedgehog to just have, a, have his own GTA game. To make it look re super realistic. Fucking Unreal Engine type of shit. With like this stupid GTA 4 mod looking fucking model of Shadow the Hedgehog interacting with a realistic looking world. Sega hire this man. Fucking Sega hire this man. Oh ho ho ho! Shadow the Hedgehog is looking good! Yeah. Yep, and then for the soundtrack, they get all the songs you think they would get for that type of game. <laughs> are you ta are you saying you want a Sonic game from the early 2000s Bush era levels of stuff? Yes, because if I have to live with 90s nostalgia, I want Bush era nostalgia with like all this fucking edgy shit. I want that to come back. But like the worst part about that shit is. The edgy bits of like the decades people are nostalgic for are always going to be underrepresented. That's why I'm really wondering like what the fuck are they going to do for like Bush era? Is my generation like the time I grew up and just going to be completely ignored? Well like 90s and like maybe 2010s nostalgia is going to be picked up soon? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares for the Zoomers. Well you know what you should do? Maybe you should get you and your fellow generation of children together and like maybe make this nostalgia game, make it happen. It's like yeah I want my notepad with my Linkin Park stickers. And maybe my anime that I sh that my mom doesn't know that I watch. My fucking Nickelodeon sitcoms. I don't want to hear about your fucking fathers and how their assholes work. All right? It makes me sick. And I I I fucking hope they fucking die a fat. <laughs> yeah, with my Jimmy Neutrons and stuff. <laughs> my fucking Ned's declassified. Yeah, the universe needs the butt rock. Mm -hmm. Survival Guide. Your results may vary. Make it happen. At least it's fucking better than Saved by the Bell or any of this shit Nostalgia Creek told me about. You were great in the 100 yard dash. Oh, thanks, but I owe my victory to Screech. You do? Oh, yeah, I pretended you were chasing me. Ouch. By the way, when he reviewed that show, he complained in his delightful high pitched way that it looks way too much like the 1980s. This is one of those shows that captured the essence of the 80s so well that sometimes seemed like we've traveled back in time to that cherished decade to relive the fun and wonder that the 1980s had to give us. The only problem? It was made in the 90s! I mean, look at this, it's like a decade behind. Were they just stuck in a time warp or something? Despite the fact that just because a decade starts, all that old shit doesn't go away just because the date rolls over to 1990. 
And also the show started in 1989. God, you never did any research for any of your videos, did you? Oh, I'm glad that eventually bit you in the ass. Well, excuse me for a living! Oh, I don't remember that show, to be honest. I just remember the intro, and that was it. Do you remember the everywhere you look, everywhere mm -hmm. you see? Not really. I just remember being on, and it's like, what else is on? I would describe a large percentage of that shit as filler. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, I think you're right. Like, when people, like, do, like, 90s nostalgia, it's kind of in vogue right now. But you kind of, you're getting the more safe 90s nostalgia. It's like, yeah, you're right. Like, I want my fucking uh, grunge. Where's my Rage Against the Machine nostalgic guitar game? Super Fuck the Man Hero 64. Nur für den 3DS. And we talked about this with 80s nostalgia as well, like, back in the, two, like, the 2000s. When 80s nostalgia and the fucking ass or fucking angry video game nerd, the fucking nerd, was around, like, he always talked about, like, fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, like, Nintendo and, like, ooh, Nintendo Power, and I'm like, ass! You know, and then he looked into an actual history book. I looked at some of the music and I'm like, wait, there's so much cool shit from the 80s that they never mention. Yeah. Like, war games and, like, all the teenager movies always get mentioned, but, like, the actual only good one, aside from Back to the Future, always gets like slightly tucked under, which is fucking. You know, I want to ask you this because you talked about war games. It's like, like people talk about war games fondly, but like where, like where do people? Like, I want people to talk about that movie Hackers from '95, the epitome of the fucking '90s edgelord shit it's like yeah that's that to me i love that type of shit mm, i've heard it a couple of times talked about i've never the, we should watch it then we should watch it we should watch it then we then we could i guess all hack into sonic games and make them better yeah we could be zero cool and crash and burn man where matthew lillard will say hack the planet in this shaggy voice hack the planet hack the planet let's like hack the planet man yeah hack the planet it's what you do <laughs> but so where do we stand on nostalgia and like Sonic 2 I guess and I'm still standing on the fact slash opinion that for something as stupid as video games and media people's personal past doesn't really matter too much when evaluating its general worth what matters is what these things are in the here and now and the only thing about the past that truly matters is history and what we can learn from it because nostalgia sucks. Shadow the Hedgehog is still goofy as shit in the here and now. Nintendo fucking sucks past and present. And Sonic is as a franchise with its highs and lows hard to generalize. Does that sound good or is that too soapboxy? Yes. Yes, is it good or is yes, is it too soapbox? I don't fucking mind. And also, hey guys, let's subscribe and ring the bell so then fucking... Yep, so you too will be on a watch list for your weird Sonic porn. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with that one. I guess we win fast enough. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. Fuck my ass. Hmm. Classified School Survival Guide. Your results may vary. Fingers!